Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a Lenovo laptop here. This is a V145 15 AST, which it won't tell you on the bottom because um, there's no labels on the bottom. They've either peeled off or the bottom case has been replaced at some point in its lifetime. But if you can turn it on and check the BIOS, that will tell you what you've got. So yeah, this is a V145 and it needs a new DC jack. Um, laptop got dropped with the plug, with the charger plugged in and it broke off the center of the charger uh, sorry it broke off the tip of the charger in the jack so now the charger and the jack are both goosed um, so I've got a new jack for this because it's a Lenovo it's soldered on because Lenovo either haven't learned or just have decided that this is where they live uh, so we're gonna get the motherboard out of this desolder the DC jack and put a new one on it let's roll the intro and get into it So the screws on this are already removed. They were removed by the customer who um, sounded like they were going to take a swing at repairing it themselves, but when they saw that the DC jack was soldered on, they were just like, oh, never mind, that's a bit beyond me, which is reasonable. Uh, a lot of laptops, the DC jack is on a little fly lead, so it is, um, I wouldn't say user replaceable, but certainly a DIY um, uh, job. Um, but yeah, this one is soldered on, so no bueno. Um, fan is also filthy. I'm going to take that out and give that a clean. Um, so yeah, might actually, and you know what, just to please the comments section, I'll do the thermal paste as well, because if the fan has been clogged up with gunge and dust, there's a good chance that the thermal paste is cooked. So I'll go ahead and replace that as well. Um, if the fan was nice and clean, apart from a little bit of just surface dust, I probably wouldn't bother, but there it is. Um, cool, so I'm going to take the motherboard out and we'll keep going. So I'm going to go around and just disconnect anything that I can see. Just pull out all of the wires and just take the board out. Right, there's our board out, and if I hold that up, you can see, yeah, man. you can see how we're missing basically just the center of the DC jack. There is a bunch of plastic in there, uh, which was, um, uh, which is the remains of the tip as well. But also, even if we dug all of that out, you can see that we're we're missing the center of the DC jack. So uh, let's stick this in the vise and remove the jack. Right, so I've got this thing in the vise, so we can heat this from uh, either side. And for HDMI ports recently, I've been heating from the back um, as per advice, because that allows you to get to more easily get heat down onto the four anchor pins at the same time. But another reason why you might want to heat from the back is to avoid certain components that are on the top side of the board. So I'm going to do the same trick here because on the back we've got not a huge amount. We've got MOSFETs and we've got a fuse and stuff like that. This is all fine. But if I turn the board around here, on the other side of the board we've got the display connector right here. Now I can angle to avoid that, but if I heat from the back I don't need to worry about this guy at all. So I'm going to heat from the other side of the board because it avoids plastic connectors. So I'm going to turn on my hot air station and I'm just going to go maximum air, maximum heat with a nozzle and we should have this guy off in a jiffy. I have not uh, pre-wetted these joins but because this is only a DC jack I'm not expecting it to give me a lot of trouble. Watch me be wrong now. On its way, there we go. Oh, so easy. After doing HDMI ports, DC jacks just seem like a dream, man. Once upon a time, these were my nemesis. So another technique that was mentioned to me uh, in YouTube comments was, um, oh, I forgot what it was called now, um, 
I, th I can't remember if it was called hot drop or what. I think it was called hot dropping, but basically is theoretically, if I kept this viced up and I reflowed those holes, I could then just drop this guy into place without clearing the holes. Um, however, I'm personally not going to do that because I don't want to apply any hot air heat to um, uh, to this guy to risk melting the plastic. Um, I'm going to clear the holes so I just have a clean slate to start with. For the HDMI port, I do actually kind of get that. It makes sense. Um, but I do have the ability to easily clear these holes, so I'm going to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to the microscope view and we'll just wick these holes clear. We can probably wick this. If not, I'll switch on the desoldering gun. So I do like the idea of hot drop, but if you've got the means to clear the holes, then it's good practice. Right, I'm going to put a generous amount of flux onto these holes. Then um, I'll see if the wick will take with no leaded solder. But usually I'm probably going to add some lead solder. Let's back out a little bit as well. We don't need to be quite this close. All right. Go on, wick. I believe in you. No. No, we'll add some new solder there. While wicking these holes clean, I accidentally knocked off a capacitor next to U282 on the left. That chip is the lid closed hall effect sensor, and the capacitor that I knocked off adds stability to its output to make sure that it doesn't jitter when the lid is kind of half closed. So I did actually have to come back and, to, and replace this. It's a 10 picofarad capacitor. But don't worry, it did get replaced, and if nothing else, this does show how easy it is to knock small components off when your eyes are just somewhere else while you're working. There we go, now we've got nice clean holes and our new DC jack will just drop in place. Now we'll just flow one hole just to get it in place, make sure it's nice and flat, do an inspection and then we commit. That's definitely gonna need some flux to actually make it flow down, but I just wanna make sure that the connector is flat first. All right, I'm going to come off the microscope. It's just a bit too close for what we're doing at the moment. Cool, that's nice and flat. Right, so for each of these holes, we put on a generous amount of flux, and I'm just lingering with the iron just to make sure we've really heated that anchor hole all the way through. Because you might have molten solder on the, on the surface, but that doesn't mean that it's actually wicked down through the hole. And if it doesn't go through the hole, then it's not going to actually grab the anchor pin, and you'll get a horrible dry joint that'll just break off. And if we inspect the other side there, we haven't come all the way up through those anchor holes, so I'm probably going to put some extras on the top bit here because I can. And I don't always do this, but with something big and mechanical like a charge port um, where, you know, there's no data pins here, there's no risk to anything, so we can just be a little bit heavy handed and just put on an excessive amount of solder to make sure that that is as strong as it can be. Uh, 
And finally, I'm just going to wick down those two screw holes, which are perilously close to the anchor ports, because I've put solder all over those, and that means the board won't go flat. And annoyingly, I've got to do this without actually wicking the hole empty, which is what I've just done. This is a super annoying one, actually. I need to do a precision... There we go, precision is achieved. Not sure how much this actually matters. The screws go down on the top side, so I don't think having a little bit of a solder blob here is actually going to cause a problem, but... Uh, If we can get them nice and flat, then I will. There we go. Right, clean up time. There we go, that'll do nicely. That is dead flat on the board, which means it's the which means the charger won't go in at a weird angle. Nice clean interior, and we've got nice filled anchor holes there, so we know that's not going to pull out or break out. Let's put it back into oh, we'll do the thermal paste while we're here as well. Three screws out for that. And that thermal paste was fine. Wouldn't say it was in great condition, but wasn't problematic. Fresh Arctic MX4 for this one. Oh, that's a bit too much. Pull back a loop. It's only a teeny tiny little CPU, this. What even was that? This is a... This looks like an AMD A4 or something heartbreaking like that. I'm going to try not to think about it because it'll make me angry. Pro tip, when you're putting the back cover on a laptop again, just actually look down through all the screw holes and make sure you haven't put a screw underneath them. Mm. Um, I just had to pull th that one there. That one actually goes through there. So I just pulled that screw out and put it back through the battery, which is where it's supposed to go. There is nothing more annoying than getting most of the screws in and then seeing the little silver head of a screw there that is in the wrong place, and then you have to pull them all out again. Okay, so let's turn it around the right way. And I've got a Lenovo charger here. We'll plug that in. That goes in with a nice, satisfying click. Had a little flash out of it then. That was all. Concern. Will it turn on? No. Uh-oh. Trouble in paradise, folks. Let's try that again.
Did I plug the keyboard in? I don't remember how the keyboard connects to this. <sighs> I'm not angry that I just missed a really colossally obvious mistake and started going into a highly technical uh, diagnosis because I forgot to plug the keyboard in. I'm happy that I've solved the problem of why this laptop doesn't turn on and I can just plug the keyboard in and then the laptop is going to turn on. It's a happy day. This is a happy little accident. Now I don't know why it didn't turn on. I think we did actually have a charge light. It was just so dim that I couldn't see it. Oh, you just can't see it. There is a charge light. It exists. It's it's just so dim you can't see it. Okay, whatever. Power on. We have a power light. It's turning on. I got punked. Display initialization. It's having a sulk because the BIOS got reset. There we go, Lenovo. So I got punked. However, we replaced the charge jack. This laptop is now fixed. This video was far longer than it needed to be. I will probably massacre the runtime of this in editing. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. See you all soon. Bye.